Good morning. I think I am live. Do you hear me? Do you hear the soft sounds of the ukulele in the background? <laughs> I'm wondering because when I tested, uh, oh no, you're not hearing the ukulele. Oh, definitely not. Okay, now I know what's wrong. <laughs> uh, my voice is coming through, but um, hold on, I will fix this. This is very important. This is quite possibly the most important thing of the day. Um, and uh, here we go. Hmm. Um, hold on a second. Oh, no, wait, hold on. I know you're just hearing it through my mic. Sorry, I should have fixed this before I started. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> Somebody eventually, when this gets published, put in the, uh, uh, the a pin, I'll put a pin comment for the time code where this actually starts. Um, let me just see something here. Oh, no, wait. Uh, here we go. No, 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 no. Yes. Ah, okay. There we go. Monitor through multi-output device. And then... <laughs> I just start this over. Hold on, I'm gonna hit stop and fix this. People can't hear me either? Hold on. Uh, voice. All right, hold on. I'm time out. I'm stopping this. Oh, you hear me. Okay. <laughs> I was like half asleep when I started this live stream. We, you can hear me. Okay. Okay. But hold on. I just want to fix this sound thing. There we go. I fixed it. I just always forget how to do this. Okay. Let's start over. Hello, good morning. Welcome to The Coding Train with me, Daniel Schiffman. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit half asleep today. I don't usually stream in the morning. It's not even really the morning, frankly. It's 1040. I've been awake for like at least like four and a half hours because I get up very early. But uh, it's been a very long week. I probably should like stream on Monday. Not that my weekends are so restful, but um, I'm excited to be here. I am ready. I, I've, I've got like a scratchy throat, like a cold kind of. It's getting cold. It's like chilly in New York. It's like it was like the summer, then it was sort of the fall for like one day. I feel like it's the winter practically. Um, so, but I'm excited to be here and do some coding stuff. I want to see if I have anything to cover here. <laughs> um, uh, Simon is asking if I saw his suggestion. Yes, Simon has given an excellent suggestion for octahedron, which is a cube with faces connected up. I would definitely like to get to that at some point, but I don't know if I'll get to that today. Uh, I am um, I'm excited to premiere something. <laughs> wait a second. Uh, uh, I have to wait till I get a message, um, like. I have to create the uh, fake scenario um, for the thing that I want to premiere. Wait a second. <laughs> Coding train, breaking news. Breaking nose, news, breaking nose. <laughs> this is not going well. How do I turn my brain on? There's got to be a way to turn my brain on. You know what I think is a way to turn my brain on? Coding. Let's just get started. So one of the things that I want to do today um, and let me, um, let me go to seven segment display. Actually, you know what, let's, let's take a moment here and go to the Coding Train website. You know what, I think the website might be broken because it's supposed to show, I think, a note here when I'm live streaming. And the most recent live stream that it's showing is from March 14th. So, Hacktoberfest, someone wants to help fix this on the website. That would be a good thing to fix. Um, but I want to um, uh, come here for a second. Okay. 
So I recently did a coding challenge, seven segment display. Um, and look at this, this has been really uh, successful in my view in the sense that it inspired a lot of creative possibilities. One that I really wanna look at, um, shoot, can I just do a search on Twitter without logging in? Uh, maybe I can log in as the coding train. Uh, yep, that was an easy way to do it, and there we go. This is actually what I'm looking for. <laughs> I love this. Uh, from Sebastien Reynaud, uh, seven segment display combined with P5.js and Matter.js. That is pretty awesome, I have to say. Uh, so this is wonderful. I love seeing these kind of creative remixes of decoding challenges. There are so many here. Um, let's click on, uh, let's actually click on all of them. Why not? Let's just look through all of them really quickly. All right, so we've got this one. We've got a uh, clock, super nice, by Super Jerry. Uh, I love this, enable auto counting. So I can disable that. Oh, and I can also probably, I guess, put in, like I can put in my own time, maybe? I don't know. Cool, I love that. Uh, oh, wait, so this is wonderful because this is exactly what Tom Scott talked about in his video about seven segment display, looking up and using a regular expression to figure out what is the longest word you can display on a seven segment display. And we've got super transcendental maybe. Um, and so uh, we can choose the color of the display. That's a really nice feature. And I really should be crediting the people here. So I probably should click on them one at a time here. This is from Tom Seeley, source code here. Uh, thank you, Tom Seeley. This is one from uh, BL4 score. Um, and look at the, oh wait, I'm on the wrong page. Um, this is nice, it's interactive. This is, relates to something that I wanna do today. Uh, we've got another clock from Weimar Shippers. Uh, I love this. Oh, look at this, and guess what? This is actually a new feature of the P5.js web editor now when you share your sketch with the full URL, uh, it, it, you get a little like um, bar on the top that has the P5 logo, the name of your sketch, and a, and a credit. So by Willy Warig. Um, you can still get a view, actually, so let's see if we can do this. Um, well, if you go to File, uh, Share, um, Full Screen, there is still a full view without it, which is, would be Embed. Um, so if we go here, um, and I switch to embed, um, there's still a full view without the, the P5 information. All right, so now we also have another clock from Swifty Turtle, excellent name. This is lovely, great work. We have a seven segment display from Tony Stark. Oh, hey, Tony Stark, thanks for contributing to the coding train. Um, Oh, look at this, with all the segments defined, the binary stuff defined. I don't know, this is, uh, let's see if we can read a bit more about what this is from Prasard Pandit, a decoder app. So this is a, maybe an app that's helping you figure out the encoding and decoding of the binary stuff, the binary numbers and how those rep are represented on the seven segment display itself. Um, we've got a processing seven segment display. So I should really, just to be, a good person, let's, let's actually run this code. This is the one thing that's a little bit tricky, it's a little bit harder. Oh, this is just actually a raw port, so I don't actually necessarily need to run this. This looks like it's just a raw port, thank you for that. Um, and then we've got the uh, object-oriented refactoring. Ah, so this, let's take a look at this, because I have to say, I take this as a badge of honor, but <laughs> most people are very nice to me in the comments, but, um, I get a lot of the, the negative comments that I get, which I don't necessarily view as negative, are your code is terrible. It's messy, it's disorganized, you should, you're teaching, your variable names are bad, you should be teaching good code practices. And fair, fair criticism, guilty as charged. But one of the things that I like to emphasize, and that's part of my process, which I recognize maybe isn't for everybody, is that messiness is part of playful experimentation. Now, you're right, software development requires care and time and thoughtful engineering. Uh, 
commenting code, organizing code, these are valuable and important skills, but sometimes you want to play around, make up an idea, and I also view it as a prompt to the viewer to think about what I've done with my code and make and change it to work for you. And that could mean organize it. Um, but I, I do aspire to uh, you know, teach good practice and also use good practices myself on this channel. So we'll see, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get better. Point taken. Um, all right, so let's look at this one though. I really wanna look at the code for this one. So one of the things I can probably do actually, I think if I just click here, in this new view, it will take me to the page with the code, and we can see, look at this. We've got a segment class, an off-color, an off-color, an on-color, a length, and a width, and a state. So this is really nice, and look how nicely documented this is. So this is a sort of format for self-documenting uh, co comments, which will, can be generated into a, a, a documentation page. Um, display the segment, set on, set off, this is lovely. Now, let's see if we look here, and we see there's even now a seven segment display class, which has a set of segments in them. It initializes them. Uh, it has the hex codes. Look at this. This is really excellent work. <laughs> this is excellent work. Who did this? Uh, Brual Renault. Thank you so much. Uh, so all of you who are looking for a more thoughtful refactoring and reorganization of my quick and dirty seven second display, this is a great one to look at. And you can see now the main program is just make a new seven second display. And look at this. Let's see if we can even figure out uh, to make two of these. Like how hard would it be now if I say, let's make uh, two of them. Or make, um, so I'm gonna say create canvas 600, 400. Um, now this, I, uh, uh, of course, should use an array, but let's just say I want to put two next to each other, and I make two of them, and I want to display a digit, update, you know, these are counting, and maybe I want to also display uh, a digit, and maybe I'll say like 10 minus index or something. Um, now what's going on here? I don't actually see two of them. So this is where I might offer an idea for improvement, which is that the, um, the offset vector is hard-coded here. So what if I were able to give it an X and a Y, then I could add the X and a Y here, then under in sketch I could say let's have one at like zero, zero comma zero, and let's have one at 100 comma zero. Now interestingly I'm still not seeing two of them, um, let's see, like, right, why don't I see two of them? Well, let's take a look at how it's drawing. The offset vector, whoops, in seven segment display, this is like kind of a private variable here, but it must be used somewhere. Where is it used? Uh, somewhere in maybe like a draw function. Write transform, oh, look at this. Top, oh, there's all these transforms. Whoa, this is crazy, kind of unbelievable. Wow, generate display. Okay, okay, here's what we need. We need a push here and a pop here. That's my guess, because my guess is that the generate display function uh, is not self-contained, so all of these translations that happen here are affecting other ones. Do transformations, this seems reasonable. Now, why aren't I still seeing two of them? Um, one, two. All right, so let's see here. Zero. Let's see, let's try to figure out what's going on. We have to debug this a bit more. Um, let's change the on color. Huh. So weird, why, why are my changes not taking effect. On color, stroke, on color, off color. Hmm, interesting. Um, let's go back to just 400 by 400. It's bothering me that it's off the... <laughs> uh, and now let's do uh, 100. So it moved this, both of them over. So also, interestingly, oh, you know what? Ah, where is the background being drawn? Uh, 
Let's, I think there's also an issue with this, which is a problem, which is that the background is being drawn here in update. So this is a problem because in, when the way I think about object-oriented programming is that uh, I only want the object to know about and do things that are part of that object itself. And background is not part of the object. Background is part of the world. So this really needs to come out uh, and be here in draw. And look at this now. Now we have successfully you know, maybe made two of them. Whoops. So now we've got two of them. So that's good. I've got two seven segment displays. Why did my change of the color not actually take effect? That's a little bit weird. I mean, it's not a super important detail, but I'm curious. Oh, because there's a set and a set on color. So somewhere else the color is being set. Um, and so presumably that's happening uh, here. Uh, it's actually here. So it's interesting Like this is a bit, I mean, it's nice that that's there, but the color is actually being set in the display itself. So for example, if I were to change this now, we're going to see, we're going to see it now blue. Okay. So anyway, I, sorry, I got, I went off on a bit of a tangent here looking at this project. Um, I'm going to save this as well. Uh, I, uh, one thing that it would be nice if um, the P5 editor could keep track of where this came from, but I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do that myself. This was from uh, object oriented refactoring. So let's um, by uh, Bruall. So let's uh, credit Bruall. Uh, and over here. So if anyone wants to take a look at this. Um, revised from Bruall, which is here, and also let's credit this GitHub page. All right, so this is the thing. This is really, this is a, here's an important tidbit that I believe in with all of my heart and soul. <laughs> and if I ever make a mistake in this realm, please let me know. Um, open source is a thing. And I encourage my students, for example, to use open source code examples in the creation of a project. And whatever the license might be, right, you might find, you know, license, license, open source licensing is a big, a, a topic unto itself that would be lovely to discuss in depth. Some open source licenses require attribution. Some have restrictions on what you can use the code for, whether commercial or non-commercial purposes. Some require uh, share back. Like if you make a change, you have to share that change back. But some open source licenses, notably like the MIT license and the BSV license, are very permissive. Meaning, yeah, I don't, I make no warranties with this code whatsoever, and you do what you like. Anything goes. However, I feel that it is good practice to, no matter the license, credit your sources. So there are some situations where that's certainly required. But even if it's not required, I wouldn't want to build on top of somebody else's code. Uh, to educational material, even if it's open sourced, without uh, crediting it back. So that's something that I always try to remember to do, um, and I would encourage you as you make projects to always uh, credit back. All right. So uh, I will. Uh, this will get hopefully left somewhere in the video's description. Maybe somebody who has uh, privileges can share this in the in the chat right now. Actually, one thing that I wanted to also mention, <laughs> housekeeping, wise is. Uh, there have been some recent improvements to the Coding Train website, which is pretty much a community project. I, I do uh, uh, would like to apologize that there are a lot of open pull requests and issues. I really need to do a better job of maintaining this community project, and I'm hoping to figure out ways in the future to get more people involved in that maintenance. Um, but uh, one of the new things that happened recently, I'm going to go under pull requests and closed, is, um, look for this, uh, web editor. It might be further down here. Let's look for this, uh, web, let's try looking like this. Uh, yes, add web editor to video page. So this is a feature that adds an option to include a link to a coding challenge or tutorial with the web editor. So if I look at any uh, web page, for example, this seven segment display one, 
Let's come back to this. Here you can find, oh weird, oh is it broken? <laughs> hey, where are the buttons? There should be like buttons to like download, ooh, I wonder if we broke something. <laughs> um, oh, I did 10 minus index, people are, up, oh, wait, hold on. I'm getting a note from the chat. Uh, 10 minus index is causing a bit of a problem with this, which is that 10 minus 0 is 10, and I want to go from 9 down to 0. So this should really be uh, 10 minus index minus 1. That should do the trick, right? 3, 2, 1, not, yeah, there we go. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> Back to what I was saying. Weird, where did it go? Let's go to a different challenge. Like, for example, um, Let's go to coding challenges, and let's go to like the, this one also. Let's go to here. Okay, so this one is has that. I don't know why it wasn't showing up, and now there's two rows of buttons, which is weird. Hi, some stuff got messed up. Hey, uh, people, feel free to file GitHub issues and uh, pull requests. But um, so what's supposed to happen here is that there is a uh, a link to view the code, which if I click here, will take me to the GitHub page that has the actual code. There is a link to download the code, which if I click that, will just trigger an automatic download of the code as a zip file. This is processing. Then there's live example. Now live example, this is not active. Live example should point to the P5.js version that runs in the browser, and I'm not sure why there isn't one for the Lisa Ju Cur the Lisha Zhu cur curve table. But there's also this. Oh, and look at this. This now view code <laughs> points to the P5.js web editor one, right? Which was the, a new feature. And this one points to the web editor live version. Ah, look at that. So I gotta clean this up. <laughs> Figure out what should be here and what shouldn't. Probably, this should be, uh, if I'm thinking about it, um, view code is always nice to go to some GitHub repo. Download code is nice to have, right? So this gives you a zip. And then um, I would say the live example should probably go to the P5.js web editor if it's there, or, or uh, GitHub pages URL if there's no P5.js web editor, or then nothing. It's deactivated if there is no live example. So, and so this might be processing or, you know, or P5. This would also be processing or P5, but this live example would always be P5. So this is the implementation. <laughs> Somebody can screenshot this and file this as a GitHub issue. And then what I could use help with actually is going back and all the old challenges that don't have a P5 web editor version of them, actually creating them. Now here's the thing. In order for, for you to do this though, I need to give you access to the Coding Train uh, P5 web editor account. Um, because I think it would be nice for this to show up under the, under the Coding Train account. I, I mean, I, um, that's what I'm thinking. So may, you might have to get in touch. Maybe somebody who's in the patron group or the Slack channel um, can help with that specifically. Okay. Don't tell me it's like, okay, it's only 11. All right. Um, I'm really I'm slow getting started today. So let me talk about what's on the horizon here. Um, let me, I should sign in. Maybe there's, I, I don't know. I should probably sign in as myself when I look at the YouTube page. But let me just see here. Is that playlist public yet? So a couple things let me mention, if you hadn't noticed. Um, hey, what's up my friend, Cali? Can I um, uh, yeah. here. Also, because I have moment. YouTube Premium. Whoa! Is this a non? Oh no, it is a skippable ad. Um, 
Okay, no thanks. I'm gonna, I, okay, sorry. Sorry for that digression there with an ad. Um, so recently, hello, well, um, the video tutorial with uh, Nabil Hussain for all. Uh, was published. This, was, this is an edited version of a live stream. So if you are interested in uh, learning how to train a long short-term memory network, uh, with TensorFlow and then running that in the browser. This came out. I also wanted to just alert you to um, some uh, a text that Nabil added to the description um, related to uh, taking up about um, data and ethics and responsibility. So I encourage you to, to read through this description here. Um, so I wanted to note that that was published. Now what I'm also looking for to Hello, mention welcome to a new is video. Um, and let's see, created playlists. I think it's not a public playlist yet. Let me look over here and see if I can switch that. Give me a second. Um, people are telling me to install ad blocker. Um, okay, what is, let me look at this, uh, playlists. Might as well make this a public playlist if people want to get started looking at this stuff. Um, edit playlist. I think this is where I would do this. Unlisted edit. <laughs> uh, how do you change? Ah, oh, yeah, public. Okay. Let's make this public right now. Okay, so now if I refresh this, I haven't released these videos yet. I'm still working on the captions and various elements. But if I go here, hello, um, hello. Um, I there is now session twelve. I have released um, session twelve, uh, Word to Vec, with three video tutorials. These are edited from last week's uh, live stream. So if you want to get started looking at this stuff, <laughs> I'm going to hopefully continue uh, my discussion of Word to Vec today. All right, all right. Now, it's time to have some fun. One of the things that, uh, and I know that's a black screen right now, I will uh, fix that in a second. Um, one of the things that uh, I did with the seven segment display is in the seven segment display, I picked up hexadecimal numbers this eraser, this is a paper towel. Where's my nice eraser? I picked up hexadecimal numbers from the, uh, from the Wikipedia page about seven segment display. And I converted those hexadecimal decimal numbers into binary, sort of, and did bit shifting and bit masking on them. And I kind of glossed over, kind of hand waved the explanation of bit shifting and bit masking. And one of the comments I got was I didn't understand the bits part. So what I'm gonna do today is, um, you know, I thought like, oh, let me just do like a one minute binary numbers tutorial. I think those kinds of things exist on YouTube already <laughs> and probably are better than what I could do. Um, you know, cause they're explainer videos with animations and sort of thoughtful diagramming. And so what I thought that I would do is do two coding challenges around binary numbers today. And I would basically make an interactive display to convert from binary numbers to decimal numbers and back. And then I would um, sort of explain what binary numbers are and then also look at bit shifting and bit masking as part of this. So I don't, uh, that's exactly the entire plan that I have. I didn't try coding any of this in advance. So this is what I'm going to do. And I think that doing this in the web editor will be fine. Um, there's definitely some complicated aspects of this. Um, let me close all these windows. Um, hold on, let me save this. There's an issue, by the way, a current open issue with the P5 web editor um, is that if you rename a sketch, um, it, and even if you saved it, it really thinks that you didn't save it, but how I'm used to going, <laughs> I'm used to that. Okay, so binary numbers, base two, and bits and bytes. Okay, let me get the chat open here to make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, and welcome new member. Breaking news. This is another breaking news. 
let me credit these people who made these breaking news things. Uh, Tristan, thank you to Tristan, new member. Um, who made this uh, wonderful, let me find who made these breaking news things. Uh, so uh, Nick, thank you to um, soundcloud.com slash Nick Ramstead slash Schiffman breaking news. Uh, <laughs> thank you to Nick Ramstead who made this one. And then there's another one. Uh, I have to find it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let me find this under community. Um, which video is this? Breaking news. Oh no! Don't I just searched breaking news on GitHub by accident? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at my YouTube comments, not on GitHub, okay. Uh, Zach Solomon on live stream number, um, live stream number, oh God, the internet is so slow. It won't even tell me which number it is. Live stream number 156. Uh, let's see if this comes up. Live stream uh, videos, live stream 156. Meet the Landers, oh. the revolutionary new standing desk from ah. iMovie Earth. Featuring the latest in high-tech <laughs> advancements, the Landers set up in just minutes and come with a free smartphone. Thank you very much. Um, all right, where, where are you, Zach Solomon? There was a comment here about breaking news. Skip that ad. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Does it show up here? Uh, SoundCloud, soundcloud.com, solo maz, slash coding train breaking news. Oh, it's gone. Here we go. So this one, thank you to Zach who made this one. I'm, 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 I'm here for all of your coding train breaking news and other sound effects that I can use throughout uh, these live streams. All right, sorry for that digression. I am getting myself ready for the coding challenge beginning of today. Okay. Um, all right. Hello, am I live talking? Yes, Coding Train. This coding challenge is brought to you by water. I have water today, and I didn't last time. My throat was killing me after my live stream. Okay. <laughs> I should really just say, water. I drink it, and then I have to go pee, which is what I feel like I have to do right now. But I'm going to do this coding challenge nonetheless. Uh, Zahidino asks, can I code my data structures homework in P5? I would love to know if that's possible. I mean, certainly you can do data structures in P5, which is just a library for JavaScript, and you can create data structures in JavaScript and um, visualize them with P5, but I don't know what your homework is exactly. <laughs> so if your homework is create a linked list in C++, then doing it in P5 won't do you a lot of good. But um, I have some videos where I do different data structure stuff in JavaScript, and maybe that will help you. All right, um, let's begin. Hello, welcome to a coding challenge, binary numbers. Um, all right, so, uh, oh wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> I wanna reference the uh, seven segment display. Uh, Schiffman, coding train. 
Well, this really should come up. There we go. This is making me crazy. Ah. Okay. Um. Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. Now, I recently did a coding challenge, number 117, about the seven segment display. And there was weird code in there like this, like val, sh greater than, greater than, shift, ampersand one, oh my goodness, what is this? I did something called bitwise operations. This is actually bit shifting and bit masking. And let me tell you, I did not, explain it well at all in the video. If I scroll down and look at the comments, so many of the comments were, I did not understand that bit shifting stuff. So I've decided to do two coding challenges. The first one I'm doing right now about binary numbers. So if you don't even know what binary numbers are, you're in the right place. If you want to kind of think about maybe a creative project you might make around binary numbers, like a clock, that is the time is displayed in binary, you're also in the right place. I am going to try to, in this coding challenge, make a, uh, um, what am I doing? I, can I just start over? This is my one mulligan, which I say every time. <laughs> now the coding starts. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, oh, come on, energy, energy, excitement, happiness, coding time. <laughs> Hello, welcome to a coding challenge about binary numbers. Now, I previously did a coding challenge, number 117, about the seven segment display as displayed right there. And I had some weird code in it, like val greater than greater than shift ampersand one. What the hell is that? Well, this is a bit shifting operation, and this is a bit masking operation. And I sort of explained it, but not really in that video. In fact, I explained it rather terribly, kind of glossing over it, and I got a ton of comments. Well, I don't know about a ton. I got a few comments. The ratio of, of the percentage of comments. <laughs> don't go off on all these tangents. <laughs> Editing is a thing. Editing is a thing. <clears throat> okay, last time, last time. <laughs> I just, I think I have to pee. I'm gonna make it through this. I just gotta get going. This really tortures the live viewers. The, the chat will be full of rage again. Wow, so many re- I don't usually do this many retakes. <laughs> but today it's just happening. <clears throat> okay, previous one was better. <laughs> oh, it's the fake energy and enthusiasm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Real energy. This is authentic energy and enthusiasm. I am genuinely excited to talk about binary numbers and don't tell me otherwise. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a coding challenge. This coding challenge is a coding challenge about binary numbers. Okay. Why am I doing this? Well, previously I did a coding challenge called the seven segment display where I made the seven segment display and in order to make it, I did these weird operations with this greater than, greater than, and this ampersand, and these operations are known as bit shifting and bit masking. And I really did not explain those concepts well, or even at all, in that challenge. And I got a bunch of comments saying, I didn't understand the whole bits part. So let me go backwards here in time, travel back in time or forward or whatever, because you could, <laughs> I'm just gonna do a video which explains binary numbers. So I'm gonna do two, two challenges. One, to just explain binary numbers, and two, uh, to actually explain bit shifting and bit masking. So first, uh, uh, <laughs> but I need to make these a coding challenge. So what I'll actually do, let me try to, I think what might make sense is to build a little visualization system where if I type in a number, a decimal number, a regular number, I'll talk about what a decimal number is in a second, um, then I see it in binary and maybe I can click on the binary number and change the bits and then have it converted back into decimal. That's what I'm gonna try to do. So, okay, so uh, if you've never heard about binary numbers, welcome. I am going to attempt to explain them right now. So first of all, before I even explain binary numbers, we've got to understand this concept of a base. The base 
A number, a number system like a base 10 or a base 16 or a base 64 or a base 2 uh, number system, the base refers to the number of possibilities uh, of digits that you can use to encode a particular number. And it could be more than digits if we get beyond 10, for example. So we taught base 10 with our 10 fingers and 10 toes is the way we traditionally think about numbers. 10 or deca, dec, and that's why we call this decimal numbers. So base 10 is decimal numbers. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I counted that wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 digits. When we get up to 9, right, we're counting up to 9. The next one, we have to go back to 0 and then add an extra spot, then go to 11. And I know I'm off the what. Off the, the, now, we could have base 2. Base 2 is binary. Two possibilities. By. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is me counting in binary. 1, 0, 0. Right? Because I only have, and I could sort of add the zeros here, I only have two possible digits for each spot in my numbering system. So this is binary. Now, other well-known encoding systems like base 16 or hexadecimal um, allow for, well, allow for 16. And well, how can we have more than 10? Well, in hexadecimal, when you get after 9, you get the letter A, then B, then C, then D, then E, then F. So you've got 16 possible digits. That's why if you see something like this, FF, this is a hexadecimal number. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Okay, so the reason why this is important in computing <laughs> is that computers actually store everything in memory as in binary. A single spot for a single binary number is called a bit. So we could say that if I were to sort of imagine the computer's memory as a sequence of slots, each slot can have a 0 or a 1 in them. 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, 8 bits is referred to as a byte. So when you hear somebody say, this file <laughs> takes, takes up like 3,000 kilobytes, well, a kilobyte is a certain amount of bytes with a certain amount of bits. This is talking about how many spots in the computer's memory are re is required to store this information. So, <laughs> I'm so tired today. <laughs> Just taking a break for a second. Um, I'm just looking at the chat. <laughs> I kind of want to start over again. All right. So you might have noticed when you were learning programming or P5 or different things that like, why there's so many situations where there are 256 possibilities, right? The red, for if you're going to set the color of a shape you're going to draw, the range is between 0 and 255, which is actually 256 possibilities. Where interestingly enough, right, what is the binary representation of 256? It is, if I just come back here and create another set of slots, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All the bits being on in, an, in a single byte is 256. Counting from 0 to 255, it's actually 255, excuse me, but it's the 256 possibility. Counting from 0 to 255 is something you can do within a single byte. This is why many systems are optimized to work with powers of 2, 
2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Right. Um, this is native to how the computer stores information. So that seven segment display that looked like this it was designed to have eight possible options because it can be the how the display is shown, rendered, can be configured in a single byte, right? Is this spot a zero or a one? That means that maybe this is either on or off. What about this one? On or off. Now, it's weird that it's called seven segment because why isn't it an eight segment display? It should be eight segments. Well, that's because it also has an extra seven segments but an extra spot for the decimal point. Okay, so that's some background on binary numbers. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do here, we're going to edit this part out, is uh, write an algorithm. Okay. All right. Okay, I've got an idea here. So let's go back over to the computer for a second, because actually JavaScript itself, if I just like open up a console here in the browser, has functions in it to convert between decimal numbers and binary numbers. What is the decimal representation of this binary number, for example? What is the binary representation of this decimal number? For whatsoever? That's really what I'm doing in this coding challenge. I want to write an algorithm that can convert back and forth. Now, you don't need to do this in JavaScript, because JavaScript will do this for you. So for example, if I were to, um, if I were to have a, a binary a, a number, I'm going to call it num equal, and I'm going to put it in quotes like as a string. Uh, what was that number? It was 01011010. I can use the JavaScript built-in function parse int, give it that number, and I must explain what base is that number in. And that is, and it's going to give me the decimal equivalent, 90. So remember I said how, um, remember how I said ff? is a number in hexadecimal. Well, I can now say parse int num in base 16. 255, right? FF is 255. And by the way, let's actually, uh, let's say parse int 1234, 1234. That's also 255. So the parse int function will take the string, the text representation of any number in any base and convert it to decimal as long as you give it the second argument base, which is also sometimes referred to as radix. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know. <laughs> now, what if you want to go the other way around? Hmm. Like what if I have the number 255 and I want to get that, <laughs> oh it's actually it's telling me here. <laughs> What if I want to get that? Uh, what if I want to get that number in in, a, in its binary representation? Well, the two string method will do that, and I can actually give that a base or array. So if I say two fifty five two string, actually if I just say two string, it's actually going to give me an error because it's like you can't call a function on a primitive value like a number. Not, luckily, if I put that in a variable, I can say num two string. Whoops, <laughs> num two string, and I get the string 255. And now, if I were to say num two string base two, I get the binary representation. So, and I can also, I could do this, by the way. I think if I put it in parentheses or something like that, I will get that. So, now we've seen how JavaScript can do all this for you automatically. Now's the time for me finally to write some code. And I could just use that, but I'm going to be, I'm, I feel like writing my, I feel like learning about how this binary stuff works in a slightly more deep way. So I'm going to write my own algorithms to convert back and forth. And I'm also going to create a visual system to make that interactive. Pause for a second. And, uh, of course, the chat is talking about whether 1,000 bits is a kilobyte or 1,024 bits is a kilobyte. And that's why I didn't actually say it either way. Um, let me get the, I lost the chat here. Um, oh, dot, dot. What does the dot, dot mean, Alka? Um, ah, XOR, thank you. Uh, Simon is also... <laughs>
Oh, I don't have a sound bite. Breaking news. Or maybe it's not. <laughs> breaking news. Breaking news from the chat. Where's it coming from? Uh, it's a decimal followed by a dot. Oh, how weird. That's the weirdest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> Why does that work? So that works? That's so weird. Um, okay. Octal. Yeah, although I wanted to mention that you can make up any... All right, okay. Where is my eraser? Okay. All right, so let's look at how this works. First of all, I, I'm a, you know, this, what I'm doing in this video is it's just working, worrying about binary numbers and decimal numbers. But it would be interesting to create a, your own as a challenge to you after you watch this or just go do it right now. Write a function that takes two numbers in in any arbitrary base and or one number in any arbitrary base and convert it to any other arbitrary base. Because even though I talked about decimal or hexadecimal or binary, we could just make a base. We could say base five or base three. Like base three would be zero, one, two, three. One, zero, one, 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 two, one, three. This is so hard to do. Two, zero, two, one, right? That's base, that's base four. <laughs> <laughs> Not base three, this is base four, because there's four possible uh, combination, digits combinations. Okay, so, but what I want to do here is if we're in binary, the easy, the, the easy way to start is to, <coughs> the easy way to start is to look at converting between binary and decimal, binary to decimal. We'll also do decimal to binary, but let's start with binary to decimal, okay. Uh, so zero, I'm just going to make a little table manually, is zero. One is one. One zero is two. One one is three. One zero zero then is four. You notice something here? We've got, oh, sorry, what's important here is we've got a zero. Well, I, so hold on. It's a little bit confusing here, the way, yeah. Yes, sorry. What's important here is, what's important here is this one, this two, and this four. Look at the pattern here. One is a one. One zero is a two. One zero zero is a four. Can you guess what one zero 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 is going to be now? Guess what? It's eight. Each bit represents the amount in decimal. Uh, the, the, each, sorry. <laughs> each bit represents a power of two. This is two to the zero. That's two to the one. That's two to the two, two squared. This is two to the three. So what we can actually do to convert from binary to decimal is use this pattern here. Is this, is this first binary digit a zero or a one? So, hold on. <laughs> I should have planned this out. I should have practiced this. Let's go back to that number. I think it was 90. Oh boy. I think it was this. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that. I think it was this. So this is the way we could do it. Basically, each one of these spots, this is 2 to the 0, this is 2 to the 1, that's 2 to the 2, that's 2 to the 3, that's 2 to the 4, that's 2 to the 5, this is 2 to the 6, this is 2 to the 7. Right? So now, 0 times this is 0. 1 times this is 2. 0 times this is 0. 1 times this is 8. 1 times this is 16. We got a 0 here. What's, what's 8, 16, 32? This is 64. And then this is 0. So now I can add all this up. 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 2. We've got uh, 20. 
carry the two, nine, 90, look at this. We have now converted between binary representation and decimal. Whew, okay. Let's go now and write the code to actually do this and also let's visualize it. All right, so let's start with just a number which equals uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, and now we're going to write a function called binary to decimal, a decimal, and it's going to take a value, and what I need to do is just loop over all the digits, and again, there's all sorts of fancy ways we could probably do this in one line of code with a higher order function, and, but we're going to do this in the, the long-winded way to really understand it. i equals zero, i is less than val dot length, i plus plus. Now actually, here's the thing, if my death binary number is a string, I actually want to start at this digit first, right? Because I want, I don't, this could be any given length, but I want to, uh, you know, I, I want to add things starting counting at zero. So what I might do here is actually say now, the index equals uh, value.length minus i minus one, right? So let's say there's eight of them. I, when when uh, i is 0, I want to look at the 7th. When i is 1, I want to look at the 6th. When i is 2, I want to look at the 5th. So we've got this. Now all I need to say is, um, let me get the uh, bit is uh, value car at um, i. Oh, sorry, car at index. I want to get that, is it a 0 or 1? And I also need to turn it into a number, so I'm just going to use parse int for that, which by default will turn it into a zero or one in decimal without any. And then I'm going to say, uh, and I need a sum, sum equals zero. Then I'm going to say sum plus equal power two to the i power times bit. So I'm basically doing exactly this. I am saying for when i is 0, go to this bit, which is the last character in the string, and then multiply it by times 2 to the ith power. Oh, shoot. Then multiply it by 2 to the ith power. OK, then when that's all done, I'm going to return sum. All right, now, so we could test this idea out, like I could just say now, a console log binary to decimal num. And look, we've got 90 down here. <laughs> this is like a 45 minute video so far where all I did was convert one number to, uh, but anyway, <laughs> we're getting somewhere. Now, what I want to do, uh, <laughs> that took me a half an hour since I started. How am I making, how is it possible that I'm making a coding challenge about binary, converting from binary to decimal, and it's like hours long? Uh. <laughs> okay. Let's now uh, visualize this uh, binary number. So I'm going to say, let's, let's make a canvas that's like 400 by 100. I'm going to say background to 55. And I'm going to say i for uh, let i equal 0, i is less than num dot length, i plus plus. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, say uh, the width of, uh, I, uh, the, the width of each, I'm going to draw a rectangle for each bit, and the width, the, the size of each rectangle is width divided by um, num.length. And then, so I want to draw, I'm going to say uh, fill uh, zero uh, rectangle uh, i times w uh, zero uh, w height. 
So I want to draw a bunch of rectangles and let's say stroke 255 just so I put something around it and we'll say its size is minus one and minus one, so uh, minus one. So there you go. So I now have this visualization of all the bits and I'm going to say uh, uh, the fill is num car at i times 255. There we go. And then <laughs> let's make the stroke like gray so it shows up kind of no matter what. So again, boy, my design skills and let's say uh, stroke weight four. I really have terrible design skills. Oh, this is awful. But you see the idea, oh, it's like thicker here, and oh, ah, oh I don't like, you. so this is the idea that I am now, and then I want to say, uh, and I'm gonna say no loop here, create P, um, create P uh, binary to decimal num. There we go, oh, and let's, uh, <laughs> okay, it's fine. So we can see here, this is what I've got. So I'm gonna end here, oh, you can't, boy, hold on. Just time out for a second, I'm thinking. I'm just going to very briefly add something to uh, style.css uh, so because I want the, uh, the font color to be white. Um, what is that? Text color? I thought it was just color. Font color? No, color. Oh, that well, 255 is not anything. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know CSS. <laughs> I'm just going to... Oh, yeah. Just so that this is a bit more legible, I am going to very briefly uh, just edit the CSS here. And I think I can add color. And then, by the way, I need to do this in hexadecimal. <laughs> FFF, FF. Shouldn't that be white now? Do I not have enough Fs? There we go. <laughs> and then uh, I am going to say uh, size, text size, font size. It must be font size. Uh, 64 point. There we go. So now, um, now I can see here. So now any binary number I put in here, I will get the decimal representation. I'm converting it and I'm visualizing it. So now you, the viewer of this, this coding challenge is complete. <laughs> it's kind of a very sad result, but I am very excited for you to do something better with this. So for example, I would love to add the feature where all I have to do is click on these and I can switch the bits. Um, so that would be great. Try that. What if, uh, you know, there's probably some nicer, more visually pleasing way. Maybe I want to put text. Um, you know, I, oh, I need to add something to this. I want to make this uh, content editable. So I could actually edit this. Oh, let me just show you. So what I could do here is, and let's, let's put this, let's make, uh, let's just make it a div. And I'm going to say uh, create div just so it shows up uh, without, right here. And now I'm going to say, di um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to add this for you. Div equals create div. Div dot attribute, attribute, I think, is the P5 way of doing this. Uh, content editable. And I'll just say true. So I'm adding an HTML attribute to this div, which makes it content editable. So now, what if I edit that? I want to update the bits, so I have to convert the other way. I, I guess I could do that in another video, maybe. But I'm done right now. Pa pause, the, stop this silliness of watching me, and go, uh, go to the URL that's in the video's description to take a look at this sketch and make your own uh, beautiful, interactive version of this with ways that I couldn't possibly imagine right now. All right, thanks for watching, and see you soon. <laughs> <sighs> That was terrible. I almost want to do the whole thing over again. Uh, I'm looking at the chat. Some people are giving interesting suggestions.
Um, zero to zero is a, you can use binary literals in JavaScript. That as well, yes. I didn't mean for this to be a coding challenge. I meant to just sort of like extra explain. Take two, <laughs> let's do that. Like how long do you think, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, I guess I should move on. I mean, just now I'm realizing I'm coding, this maybe doesn't make sense as a coding challenge. Maybe it's really like a tutorial series because it could be multi-part, like. Hmm. I'm, I can make it, do it over again. What are you doing next, asks Nasir. Make the rectangles draggable. Like, I mean, there's so many things I would like to, uh, that I meant to sort of like do here. Um, oh, hold on. I'm thinking, I don't, right, I know, yes, I, but I felt like, so Alessandra makes a very good comment in the chat, which is, uh, the thing is, this didn't really explain the bit operations in the seven segment video. Yes, that's definitely what I was going to do next, because now once I have a visual system, I can start to add like shifting to it, like what if I press the right arrow and shift everything over? <sighs> I sort of feel like um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just torn as to what to do here. I kind of want to just do that whole thing over again as like a second take now that I kind of understand what it is I'm doing because um, I can probably be much less long-winded about it. Let me at least erase over here. But I don't know if that will... Ultimately, these live streams are not what the larger YouTube audience watches. The larger YouTube audience watches the edited versions of these. Um, I mean, the amount of time I'm thinking about redoing this over. Um, The colors should be the other way around. Yeah, they definitely should be. No, no, I guess so. I don't know. Let's, I guess I could use DOM elements. Click on them. Ugh. I think I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to do this one more time because I won't be able to live with myself if I don't. So I apologize to everybody. Um, um, okay. All right. I'm, I, I guess I'm just gonna make a new sketch. Yeah, here we go. Okay. All right, everyone. The, uh, the, the ir irony here is that I don't have very much time and I'm gonna end up just doing only the binary stuff today, which I actually don't really mind <laughs> so much. All right, everybody. <sighs> so, all of you watching live should just go on with your day now. Go do something else. Uh, make yourself a cup of tea. 
Uh, go watch a different YouTube video. <laughs> uh, play a game of chess. We'll go outside if it's a nice day outside where you are. Make, uh, have something to eat. Go do something else because I am literally going to do exactly what I just did. Just, just, to, just to see what happens. Um, just, I'm just, now I'm curious for this experiment if actually I produce better content doing something twice or whether the spontaneousness of the first time is actually better. We'll find out, won't we? Okay. Oh no, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, here we go, okay. So this is the thing, maybe this doesn't make sense as a coding challenge. I think I was just thinking coding challenge because that's what, but. All right. All right, we're going to do it as a coding challenge. It's fine. And then we'll do addendums, part, multi-part, because why not? Or it'll be long. It's going to be long. That's fine. All right. I just have to know that it's going to be long at the beginning. <gasps> Hello, and welcome to what will undoubtedly be the longest video you've ever watched about binary numbers. So why am I making this uh, challenge here? So I made a coding challenge number 117 uh, called the seven segment display. And what I was doing was creating a visual a JavaScript HTML canvas version of a seven segment display. And to do that, I had some weird code in there. Val greater than greater than shift ampersand one. And that code, that code right up there, uh, made no sense to anybody. <laughs> and I tried to explain it, but I got a lot of comments saying I didn't get what this was. So this is bit shifting and bit masking. So before I can even get into that, I thought, let's take a deep breath and let's just enjoy and go back, backwards in a time, days of yore, when we didn't have anything but binary numbers. We had to program everything in binary numbers. I don't know, this, this never happened for me, but I could imagine there was a time where this really happened. So this is a coding challenge where I will explain what binary numbers are, and then I will create a sketch, P5JS sketch in JavaScript that converts a binary number to a decimal number. Okay, so maybe you're even asking right now, what is a binary number? What is a decimal number? So before I can even answer that, we have to talk about this idea of base. Base is, uh, is a term that refers to the number of possibilities in a counting system, in a number system. So base two, or binary, there are only two possibilities a zero or a one. Base 10, 10 dec, deca, or decimal, has 10 possibilities, zero through nine. There are other well-known numbering systems that get used often. Probably the one you see in computing the most is base 16, or hexadecimal. And this actually has 16 possible digits, zero through nine, and also A through F. So when you see something like this in CSS, like FF00FF, zero zero FF, this is hexadecimal encoding. This FF in decimal is 255. This 00, zero in decimal is zero. This FF is 255. So this is the color. This is a representation of the color red of 255, zero, zero of green and blue 255. So anyway, so this kind of encoding of information exists. And by the way, in my seven segment display, there were hexadecimal representations of what should be displayed on the seven segment display. Okay, so hexadecimal is interesting. I'm not gonna do hexadecimal conversion in this video, but you know, it's important to realize like these are maybe some that you see. I think like base eight is used for like some file systems. Um, but um, you can make up anything. Like if you have base four, you just have four possibilities, maybe zero, one, two, or three. And when I say possibilities, it, it, this defines how you count. 
And by the way, this, historically, there are all sorts of alternative ways of counting. I believe, I was looking, uh, um, at the Aztecs used uh, maybe units of like zero, then 20, then 40, then 800, then 8,000. There's like, these were the, and, the, and those were, instead of digits, they were actually like drawings. Of what, but so anyway, so you can look that up. Somebody will make a nice explainer YouTube video about counting systems. But if we have base two, this means there are only two possibilities. So like, let's let's use base ten decimal because we understand that uh, ten fingers, ten toes. That's why base ten is the convention. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, right? Because once we get to nine, we've run out of possibilities in a single digit, so we switch to zero, and then the next digit over, the tens unit, becomes a one. This is what kids learn in elementary school in counting in groups of 10, hundreds units, etc. cetera. All right, so, but if I were doing this in binary, I would say zero, then I would say one, and then I have run out of digits. I have no more digits left. So I have to say one, zero, and then one, one, and then uh oh, one, zero, zero, then one, zero, one, 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 one. I'm totally like, this is the worst drawing ever, and then one, zero, zero, zero. Did I get that right? No, I totally did not. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero, then one, one, one. And then one, zero, zero, zero. Oh, this is hard. Okay, let, let me match up some things for you. So something that's really interesting here is one matches up with one. One, zero matches up with two. One, zero, zero matches up with four. Five, six, seven. One, zero, 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 zero matches up with eight. Notice that when there is only the leading digit one and everything else is a zero, there's a pattern here. One, two, four, eight. Maybe now you could imagine what one, zero, 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 zero is going to be. How about 16? Whoops, sorry, 16. I should put that over here. One, two, four, eight, 16. These numbers are doubling. So in fact, each one of these digits in binary represents not like the tens, the twos. So with a one, this is actually one, this is actually two to the zero power. Two, this is two to the one power. This is two squared, two to the third power, we're doubling. So this is, by the way, the algorithm that I need to write in my code to convert from binary representation to decimal representation. Are you ready to do that? I'm ready. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe that was better so far. So now I'm going to show the thing in JavaScript where you can actually, it'll do this for you. All right. All right, so actually before I write my own algorithm, I should point out that this is the kind of thing that you can actually do in JavaScript. So first of all, I think you can make a number, like if you say 0b, like if you put like the zero then the B, it's like, oh, now this number's gonna be in binary. So like if I say like one zero, that should be, no. <laughs> oh, whoops, sorry. Actually, it is right. Hold on, let me come back here and refresh this page. <laughs> oh God, now I have to watch this crazy ad again. <sighs> okay, all right, um, I don't know, that became an eight now. Let me come back, all right. So one thing I want to show you first is you can actually, um, you, you don't need to write your own algorithm to do this conversion. This is built into the way that computers work. And actually JavaScript has several helpful fun help, helper functions that'll do this for you. Um, I think if I say, for example, uh, equals zero B, if, if I have a variable that's equal zero B, I can put any uh, encoding. So like, what if I put one, 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 one? Um, now actually the value of, that's actually 255. So this is, I can actually hard code a number in binary by saying 0b. I can also use this uh, parse int function. So if I say parse int and give it a string, like 255 just converts it, the string, to a number. But I can do things like say parse int uh, 110 
and then give it a radix, or this is another word for base, and say like, what is the value, uh, the integer value, the decimal integer value of 110 in base two, right? It's six in base, if it were base 10, obviously it's 110. So this, is a, this will actually be done for you just through that parse int function. But let's go and actually write our own um, algorithm for this. Yes, there is a bell ringing. And let's go to the web editor. So let's, let's just assume for the sake of argument that the binary numbers that I want to work with are going to be strings. So I am going to make a number. Uh, and I'm going to make it a binary number. And I, you know, there's a thing about like when you have eight bits, that's kind of important here, right? Each one of these is referred to as a bit. Each spot in a binary number is a bit. When you have eight of them, that's a byte. And so this has to do with how things are stored in the computer's memory, right? Everything ultimately in the depths of your computer is stored in binary format. And the amount of space it takes up is the number of bytes or kilobytes or gigabytes, et cetera, terabytes. But um, I'm going to waste a lot of space and encode my binary number as a string. So let's just say, let's just try something really simple, like 100. Zero, zero. And we know that should be four, right? Zero, one, one, zero. No, that's not four. Yeah, it is four. <laughs> I lost my mind for a second there, right? This is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So we should get, if we do this right, we'll get four. Okay, now I want to write a function. I'm going to call it uh, bin binary to decimal. It'll take in any arbitrary value, which is a string, and we could make this much more generic. So by the way, as a challenge to you, what if you made a function like this, which is just number converter, it takes a number uh, and two base, a base and a second base. So here's the number in a given base, give it back to me in another base, it'll be generic. That's a challenge for you to do <laughs> now or later or whenever you want. Okay, so the thing that I need to do is I need to loop through, um, the, um, sorry, i equals zero, i is less than value dot length. So if it's a string, I'm gonna loop through the string one character at a time. So for each character, the way to convert it is to add up all of the twos. So for example, 101 is a five because it is 100 zero plus 001 is 101. And this is four, and this is one, so one zero one is five. So if I just start here and take the first digit multiplied by two, and take the second digit multiplied by, sorry, multiplied by one, the second digit multiplied by two, the third digit multiplied by four, add all those things together, and by the way, it's not just one, two, four, it's two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, so it's the exponent that's counting up. So I'm going to say sum plus equal power. And now I need to get this value. So I need to get um, the I need to get the zero or the one. So I'm going to say the bit equals uh, um, value car at i. Now here's the thing. Hmm, hmm. This is an interesting question here. What is I when it starts at zero. I is actually the, a string representation. This is the zero index. So even though I want to do the conversion by starting over here, I'm actually over here. So I actually want to get to the end of the, I want to start from the end of the array. Uh, not the array, the end of the string. And a quick way that I can do that is by saying um, val, dot, val dot length minus i minus one. Right? If there are three digits, I have, not, I have two, one, zero. Not zero, one, two, two, one, zero. So three minus i minus one. So sum equals power of two to the bit. And I need to make this a number. So I'll just use parse int because it's a string. And then let's just say console.log sum. And I think we're done, sort of. <laughs> uh, console.log sum, uh, and let's see, um, 
let's, let's do a binary, binary to decimal val. And actually, so this should return a uh, num, sorry. And, oh, there we go, four. Let's test some other ones out. Let's add another one. Six. Let's try one zero, one zero zero. This is a byte, right? If all the ones are on in a byte, right? Everything is on. Eight bits is a byte, and if everything is a one, what do we get? Okay, I need one more. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Oh, something is wrong. No, this isn't right. I've made a mistake. Two to the parse int bit. By the way, um, down low is asking why not iterate from val.length minus one to zero. What did I get wrong here? Oh, oh, oh. This is not right at all. Oh my goodness. I'm so wrong. <laughs> this code is not correct at all. <laughs> so remember, I am, each digit represents a one, a two, a four, two to the ith power. I actually even said that somewhere, somewhere, I, sometime earlier I said two to the ith power. <laughs> Maybe only in my head. So what I'm actually doing is taking that bit and multiplying it. Now, of course, it's a string, so I have to convert it, the string value. Now, this is what I'm looking to do, and now 255. There we go. Boy, I had, somehow I was getting the, some right answers by accident. So that should be four. This should be five, yep. Whoops, you can't have twos there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that should be 18. So I should probably write some error handling, right? Because actually, this would actually work if I put a three in there. It's going to give me a number, but it makes no sense at all. So, and once again, I was, what I wanted to show was that eight bits all on gives me 255. And in fact, this is why we see, again, the range. You can store 256 possibilities in a single byte, a byte being eight bits. 256 in decimal or two digits in hexadecimal. Okay. All right. Um, I'm getting some messages from the chat saying that maybe it would be more intuitive to run the loop backwards. So yes, but then I have to, so I, it's six of one, half dozen of the other as far as I'm concerned because I either have to invert it here or I have to invert it here. So I don't know which would be more. I mean, I could have a counter. So, you know, I could do this, counter equals zero, and I could run the loop backwards and then increase the counter. But I don't know. I'm going to stick with what I have. All right. Now, I said this was going to be a long one, and I'm going to let it just be a long one. If you want to stick around and keep watching, you could go do something else. But what I'm going to do is now make this interactive. So I want to make something where I can actually click here and I can turn on and off bits and see the conversion live. So let's figure out how we're going to do that. So I think I want to use some object-oriented programming. Um, and I am going to make a, a class. I'm going to make an, add another JavaScript file called bit.js. And I am going to make a bit class, and the bit class is going to have a, and let me take off this auto refresh for right now, um, it's going to have an x, I'm going to just, it's going to have an x and a y, uh, and a, like a, a width, like a size, maybe I'll make it um, a circle, so it's going to have like a diameter, and I'll use a circle to represent each bit. And then it's going to have a state, right? Its state is going to be on or off. Then I'm going to have a show function, or render I could call it, where I'm going to say a stroke 255. Let's make the outline white. And should it be, uh, I don't know, I can never figure this out. Is, is black on, white on? I don't know. Maybe I should make it red and blue. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'll, we'll see how it looks. So I'm going to say draw an ellipse at... Uh, this dot x, 
this dot y, uh, this dot diameter, and uh, its fill is going to be uh, 255 times this dot state. So in this case, it would be white if it's on. So what I want to do now is make an array. And let's just, let's just use eight. Uh, we'll do a byte. And actually, so I could call this a byte. Well, that's probably like a bad word for me to use because maybe that's reserved somewhere in JavaScript. But let's say i equals zero, i is less than eight, i plus plus. And let's make a, 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 a bit equals a new bit at i times, so let's say I want to fit all eight across in my, and I could use DOM elements or something that's going to be easier to interact with, but I'm just going to draw them as circles. So I am going to say, I need to calculate a width, which is the width of the canvas divided by uh, eight. So I'm going to say it's, uh, its x value is i times uh, width, its y value will be uh, at 50, and its diameter will be w. And I'm going to say uh, byte index i equals that bit. And I guess I don't need a separate variable here. I'll just do this. And then I want to say uh, here, I want to say byte index i dot show. So what do we got? Oh, let me turn back on auto refresh. And I've got some errors. Show is undefined. I see a show function. Oh, wait, whoops. <laughs> I put these in the wrong place. The creation of them has to be in setup. And uh, this should go and draw. Ah, nope, stop, don't. Ah. All right, unbit is not defined. Oh, of course, I forgot that if I'm adding another JavaScript class, I need to make sure I reference it from my HTML file. And now we're seeing, and if, I, if all of them have a state of on, hmm, I'm not seeing anything. So uh, let's see, oh, I've got to pass in the arguments. X, Y, D. So right now I want to set the arguments based on this. There we go, there they are. There's all my bits. And maybe I want to offset them a little bit. And Maybe I actually want like this to be, um, their diameter to be like have a little buffer in it. Uh, whoops, there we go. So this is looking nice. There are my bits. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm excited about this. <laughs> this is gonna be good. Uh, and now if I take the state and like state zero, there we go. So now let's make the state. Let's actually also um, initialize the state um, I'm just going to write that in, in a separate, um, so I'm going to set state and I'm going to actually say num.car at uh, i. So I'm going to use the character, uh, sorry, I'm going to use the, the individual character there to set the state of the particular bit. Now, uh, set state is not a function because I need to add that in here. And I'm going to say set state, uh, state, and I'm going to say uh, this dot state equals, and I'll add parse int in here just to make sure it's a number. Um, and now, uh, what's going on? Set state is not a function. Set state, I see that as a function. Hold on. <laughs> Sketch dot. Oh, byte is not, of course, byte index i dot set state. There we go. So now, as I change values in here, it turns those bits on and off. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Um, now what I want to do is I'm going to add a uh, decimal, I'm going to say decimal p, decimal p equals create p, uh, <laughs> what, is, what am I doing? Uh, create P, and then in the draw loop, and it's silly that I have a draw loop here, I don't need to continue to draw, but that's something that I can revise later. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, where's that function? Binary to decimal. Um, binary to decimal, I'm going to say, uh, um, decimal P, 
HTML, binary to decibel num. And so now we should see it says undefined. Ooh. Oh, because it's console logging it. <laughs> I want to return some. Okay, 182. Now you can barely see that. So let me go to my CSS for a second and add a color. And guess what? I'm going to use hexadecimal. Will it actually do it? No, I can use three Fs because it'll, but um, let's use six to do RGB. And let's also make the font size like much bigger. Okay, so now, and let's actually make this a just, um, it's got this extra, uh, because it's a paragraph element. I, actually, this is so silly, but I'm gonna make it a div just so it shows up up here. Okay, so now, this is not interactive, but I can do this. And it does feel, it does look inverted, right? This really looks like on, off, on, on, the way that I've kind of drawn this. Somehow the, the, the black color looks like I've turned it on. So, you know, I could probably make the background much darker. Like if I made the background like 51. Yeah, so maybe this look, I stand still, I don't know. It's so confusing. What if I made, <laughs> I don't know which is which. You tell me, I, my visual design skills are kind of a disaster. But if I go back to this, um, but anyway, whichever way I think it is, I could actually just say 255 minus this. And now, right, now it is colored black when it is on. And I could say 1010. One zero zero one. We can see one sixty nine. Okay. Should I make this interactive? I mean, I've gone on for way too long already. Let's make because I need to make this interactive. Do you know why? Because the whole point of doing this was to talk about bit shifting and bit masking, and I'm going to get to that. But that'll do in a separate video. Let's make this interactive. So, what do I need here? I need some sort of function to see uh, if it uh, if this uh, bit contains a point. So if, so what I need to do is calculate the distance between this point and its x and y. And then uh, if um, the distance is less than uh, the radius, which is the diameter divided by two, and it's this dot diameter. And I'm gonna call this toggle. I'm actually just gonna, I could return, I'm gonna make this the toggle function. Then I'm going to say uh, this dot state equals now. If the state is a zero, I want it to be a one. If it's a one, I want it to be a zero. What's a nice way of doing that? I mean, I could write an if statement. There's gotta be another way. Speed this part of me thinking up. <laughs> um, I mean, not. Okay, I thought of a way. I could say not this times one, right? Wouldn't it, uh, it's gonna give me a true, would this work? No, wait, hold on. Yeah, I know I could use that silly ternary thing. Not, I know not state would work. Plus one mod two, oh, I love that. to the power of negative one. Well, these are all such good suggestions. All such good suggestions. True or false, yeah, yeah. All right, so people are giving me great suggestions like, uh, s hold on. I lost all the suggestions now. It all went away. Oh yeah, people are giving sorry, people are giving me great suggestions like plus one modulus two to the power of negative one. I think I'm just going to admit to myself that really what I meant was for this to be true or false. <laughs> so I'm gonna the state's going to be false, and when I say set state, I'm going to do parse boolean. Is that a function in JavaScript? Let's see if it is. And then I can say not this dot state. Parse Boolean is not defined. <laughs> There's no parse Boolean? What if I do Boolean? Ah, there we go. Okay, so Boolean is like a, a function, I guess, or um, that will convert that to this. Um, and then here, what I want to do is, um, I could just say if this.state fill zero, and of course this is rather awkward, but I don't care. This is how I like to write code. Uh, there we go. Hmm. Mm, this is not, this is no good, no good. That didn't work. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? Those are strings. So this needs to actually say parse int. There we go. Okay, we're back. We're back, baby. Okay, now, uh, now this, boy, there's lots of things you could improve, right? Um, all right, now what I can do is make these interactive. So I can now add the uh, mouse press function. And I can just say for, and I can loop through again. Once again, I can loop through, and this should really be byte.length. I can do this, and I can loop through all of them. And I can say uh, toggle, whoops, no. And I can just call toggle with the mouse coordinates. And now, look at this. Oh, but how come it's not updating? Oh, shoot. It's been a half an hour. <laughs> it's actually not so bad. So it's toggling. The toggling is working, but it's not updating. Ooh, why is it not updating? Because oh, I am converting the string. This, my function converts a string. So I could do something like make the, I could make the, the, the decimal version of the number out of the array of bit objects. But I think what might actually work nicely here is for to make the string out of it. So what if uh, what I do now is I say in here, I'm going to say, uh, always, I'm just going to use that same variable, num equals an empty string. And then I'm going to say num plus equal, uh, oh, this is in setup, sorry, in draw plus equal. <laughs> oh, now I want to have a 0 or a 1, because if I say this dot byte index i dot state, so this is where I have to use, but I have to embrace the ternary operator. It's something that I have never natively really understood. It's like never fit into my brain. But there's this thing called ternary operator, and it looks like this. The condition, and if the condition is true, this is the result. If it's false, this is the result. We can make this happen right now. We can use that ternary operator. The condition is actually just Byte index i dot state. Then I need the question mark. And this is so nice. I just need to have, if it's true, a 1 or a 0. It's false. Mm. <laughs> oh, I need to say recreate that string. Whoa, look, it's going crazy. There we go. Look at this. Now. Oh, so lovely. Let's go. We did it. Everybody, we did it. I made a binary thing that you can click on bits and convert it to a binary number. Now, here's the thing. Oh, boy, you, the creative person watching, if you made it to the end of this video, wow. You really are something. <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe it because this was ridiculously long-winded to just explain binary numbers. But you now have the opportunity to make something creative here. You could, what if you made it? You could make a clock that displays the time in binary. Maybe you could actually also show the hexadecimal value. You could actually make this a form content editable that you could convert backwards. How do you convert? This is a thought experiment for you. I can come back and do another video. But how do you convert not from binary to decimal? How would you convert from decimal to binary? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with division and the remainder. I think. Um, so uh, there's so many things you could do. You can make a, a, a more interactive version. You can make a counter that's sort of, oh, this would be fun to have this like count up in binary. But that's kind of like the clock. You'll be you color, other ways of visualizing it. You'll, you'll come up with something. I know you will. You always do. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this coding challenge. Um, and I will, I, I remember at the beginning when I said the whole point of this was talking about bit shifting and bit masking. I will come back and I will do that. So that will be in a separate challenge. I'm going to add some buttons for shifting and masking. All right. <sighs> OK. All right, everybody. I can't believe I spent the entire two hours basically on this. Of course, I, I wasted half an hour, and I did it twice. But I think we've got something, maybe. Hold on, I gotta check my schedule.
as I, I sort of said I was going to be done at 12.30, but I really want to do the masking and shifting. Because there's going to be some really cool stuff you'll see with the shifting. Okay. Um, and okay. Let me... Uh, let me check the calendar here. Oh, I'm on the calendar. What time is the thing? One o'clock. Okay. The thing I need to go to is at one, which is 40 minutes from now. I also need to get lunch, but I can bring lunch to the thing. So I think that if I'm done at 1245, that's okay. All right, everybody. I, I don't know why, but this really pleases me. I really like this. This is who I am. All right. And let's actually, and I think I can actually get, I think it would actually be better. I'm just gonna adjust the code a little bit um, to, um, Okay. All right, so let me save this as, actually maybe I should make them all on. Yeah. Um, let me save this and save it as um, bits and bytes. Uh, here's the URL if somebody wants to post this in the chat. Um, and now, um, duplicate, yes, duplicate. Oh, let me just say interactive bits, interactive bits, let's call it that. Then I'm gonna say duplicate, and I'm gonna call it interactive bit, whoop, interactive bit shifting, okay. Let me reorganize the code a little bit. All right. Okay, this still works. All right, here we go. Oh, let me erase all this. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will read this. Zachary in the chat writes, read my joke. Why do mathematicians always mistake, I don't have like a laugh, do I have a laugh track? No, or like a ba -dump chink. Um, why do mathematicians always mistake Halloween and Christmas? Because oct 31 equals dec 25. <laughs> I don't have my sound on. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. All right, um, here we go. Hello, welcome to Coding Challenge Bit Shifting. So this is the second part, sort of, of this Coding Challenge series about binary numbers that all came from me work, uh, me uh, do, uh, implementing this in the seven segment display video coding challenge and then everybody asking, what was that that you did? This shifting and masking makes no sense to me. So what I did in the previous video, if you actually managed to watch that video, was I created this little interactive uh, binary to decimal converter system. So this is a single byte with eight bits 
every bit being on. I don't know, maybe that should be white if it's on, black if it's off, it probably, whatever. But black in this case means it's on. Um, and so you can see here, if I toggle all of them off, I have a zero. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. So I can just toggle these uh, bits on and off and get the decimal representation of that number. Okay, so what do I want to do now? What I want to do now is add bit shifting to this. Well, what is bit shifting and why would you ever want to do it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I know what it is. Why you would ever want to do it? Well, I needed to do it with my uh, seven segment uh, challenge, so maybe that's the reason why you'd want to do it. But let's talk about it. So let's say for the sake of argument that we have the number 1001. One, actually, hold on. <laughs> Let's say for the sake of argument that we have the number 0101, uh, 1010. So first of all, I need to convert this into decimal, just to, I mean, I don't need to to do bit shifting, but just to sort of think about it. So let's think about that. This is one, uh, so this is two plus eight plus 16 plus 64. So that's uh, 80 plus 10 is 90. So this number is 90. Where's my eraser? Okay, so that's 90. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what is bit shifting? So bit shifting, when you take any number, like the number 90, you can ask to, for the computer to think about it in binary, which it's already doing. That's actually what it's doing, and shift the bits around. So I could say shift to the right, or I could say shift to the left, and I can say shift by a certain amount. So let's say I just say shift to the right by one. So this is bit shifting, and what that actually does is it shifts all the bits over. So this is a zero, this is a zero, this shifts to here, that's a one, that's a zero, one, one, that's a zero, and this is a one. Now interestingly enough, I can tell you that this is the number 45. I hope it's the number 45. Why? This is what's really interesting. Shifting the bits over by one is actually the same operation as dividing by two. Think about the powers of two and how binary numbers work. Shifting to the other way, to the left, is multiplying by two. Look at this, let's be sure about this. This is one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. So 40 plus five, 45. <laughs> I was right! So this is what bit shifting is basically does. So in theory, um, does when you say 90 divided by two, does it shift the bits? I don't know, maybe. But this is actually, I've heard, <laughs> I think this is right, that this is a faster way to divide by two. Of course, you can only do it with integers. And how floating point numbers are represented as bits is a whole other discussion. But now, what we can do is let's add this feature to our code. And by the way, we can shift by more than one at a time. I could shift by four bits, etc. But, all right. And you might be thinking to yourself, I don't get it. Why is this one a zero? Like, wouldn't there be some bit over here to shift in? Well, when you apply bit shifting, you can imagine that the number 90, if you were represented in two bytes, all of these would be zeros. So it all, always, we can always sort of assume the thing to the right is a zero. And whatever is here gets shifted over and basically gets removed. So by the way, if we tried to shift again and divide this, we would get, what would we get? We'd get the number 22. We wouldn't get 22 and a half because we get the integer value of dividing that by two, which takes off the decimal value. Okay, let's add that. So let's go over here and let's add a button. Let's add a shift B button. And let's say, and I'm just using uh, shift button equals create button, and I'll put this in the button. So now I can say, oh, that's so tiny, but that's fine. So this is going to be my button. Whenever I click it, I'm going to shift the bits to the right. So how am I going to do this? Mm, function, um, so let's, uh, let's say uh, shift, shift button, shift bits. So I'm going to write a function called shift bits. Cue all of the jokes about me being Daniel shift man. Man, shift man, okay, what, function with a C. Um, and now, 
is not a function. Shift bits, shift button. Oh, shift button <laughs> dot mouse pressed. This is the P5 DOM library that I, I'm able to attach a function as an event to when I click the mouse on this button. So now what I'm going to do is, oh, okay. Well, here's the, th the funny thing is, I, I was doing this to show you about bit shifting. Oh, I guess I could take the, oh, interesting. Oh, look at this. Think about, the, ah. This is really interesting. So what I, I, there's a couple ways I could approach this problem. If you watch the previous video, all of these are like a bit object, and I can, um, I've kind of kept all information about like its x and y, its diameter and its state, and I'm rendering it. But what I'm actually going to do here is I can take the decimal version, right? So, um, so this is a little um, bit of code here I'm going to put into a function, which is going to be, which is just going to be a function like get decimal. So whatever the state is, I'm going to get, oh no, that's get, sorry, get binary string. This is going to return the binary string of whatever the visualization is reporting. So I'm going to say um, get binary string. So now I'm back to what I had before, right? But now in this shift bits, I can do exactly this again. So I want to get the binary string. Then I want to get the number, uh, the, the value equals get, um, equals binary to decimal of that number. Then I want to say val equals val shift by one. So I want to shift the bits over by one, but now I'm going to have to convert that back to binary. I don't actually have a decimal to binary function. What I want to say now is uh, num equals decimal to binary, right, of value. So this is what I want to do. I want to be able to now, anytime I click this, get the, con get the conversion back to decimal. Oh, I have to write a new function. So this was binary to decimal. Now I need to write a function. I knew, I knew I would have to do this. I left this as an exercise, but I'm going to need it now. Decimal to binary. Now again, I could get JavaScript to do this for me natively with two string. So for example, if I just open up the console here and I were to say uh, let num equals uh, 90, I could say num to string 2. <laughs> oh, I'm done. Oh, maybe I'll just do this. <laughs> It'd be really nice to just do this, but I'm going to do it myself. So what I'm going to do is I need to get, now I get a num value in. Oh, I'm using these variable names in terrible ways. I need to do a refactoring of this with better variable names. And what I'm going to do is, I, and I know it's, I'm going to always do this as eight bits. So this is a bit of a constraint. I don't have to be so super generic here. I'm going to say int i equal, oh no, not int. Uh, let i equal zero. Uh, i is less than eight. i, I plus plus. And now, what do I want to do? I need to divide it by, so here's the thing. How does this work? <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is how you do it. Let's say I'm going to take the value 90 and try to turn that into binary. So my theory here is that I'm going to divide by 128, divide by 64, divide by 32, divide by 16, divide by 8, divide by 4, and you can see what I'm doing here. I am taking the thing, same thing that I did, powers of 2, but I'm going to use the division operator. What do I get when I say 90 divided by 128? I get a 0. 90 divided by 64, I get a 1 remainder something. 90 divided by 32, Oh, here's the thing. Ah, so what's the remainder? Oh, okay, so this is what I need to, um, the remainder here is, sorry, uh, 64, 74, 84, 26. So this bit is going to be a one, and now I take that, I don't take do 90 divided by 32. Ah, oh, what am I thinking here? This is not what I meant to do. Ah, something fell over. Um, so let's get rid of this 90 here. 
So this is zero remainder 90, basically, right? Zero remainder 90, so that remainder comes over here. Now it's one remainder 26. That 26 comes over here. 26 divided by 32 is zero remainder 26. 26 divided by 16 is one remainder 10, right? 10 divided by eight is one remainder two. You can see where I'm going here. So I should be able to do this now. Come back over here to the code. It's weird how much fun this is for me. Um, so what I need to do now, okay, so I'm starting with the number and I'm gonna say the uh, binary bits you know, is a, I'm gonna use a string and I'm going to go from two to the seventh, i equals zero, i is greater than equal, i starts at seven, i goes down to zero, i minus minus. And the remain, I'm gonna need this remainder value so the first thing that I want to do is, so call the divisor equals power of two to the i. Then what I want to do is I need to do integer division. So I want to say number, um, I want to say the, um, the answer or the, the, the value, the bit value <laughs> equals number divided by uh, divisor, pause for a second, I lost my chat. Number by divisor, this is kind of awkward. Is there a way to do integer? I'll just use, okay. Number divided by divisor, here's the thing, I'm gonna f use floor. So Java, JavaScript natively is going to do everything as floating point. If I were in like the Java programming language, it would just give me the, without the remainder. So, and then I'm going to say the remainder equals the, um, equals the, hold on. I lost my train of thought for a second. I, I lost the chat over here because I'm getting, things are beeping at me to go to meetings. Um, okay. Um, with division, it's like, oh, I can use modulus. You can simply do mod 2 to the i. Remainder equals num. Okay, sorry. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot something, but I have a whole video. Actually, Golan Levin came and did a guest tutorial about a particular operation called modulus, represented, I think the operation is called modulo, and maybe they. Symbol is modulus. I can never remember this. Someone's going to, I'm going to get a lot of comments telling me the correct way to do this. I can just see it already. But this gives you the remainder of the division operation. So what I can do here, and this, by the way, this should be remainder, and remainder should be num, and then the remainder is the remainder modulus divisor, right? And now... Um, oh, and this, and the bit value is bits plus equal bit value. Boy, is this possibly right? And then return uh, bits. <laughs> Where did I go? Okay, let's just see if this function even works. So one thing I can do actually, I'm just going to go, the, the P5 web editor console isn't interactive, but I can go here to the canvas frame and I can say, uh, right, what was that name of that function? Decimal to binary. Uh, and if I have the decimal number like 100, um, 90, <gasps> I think that's right. It worked, okay. 255, yeah, okay, great. So that works. So now, uh, where, when I'm shifting, right, what was I doing? I was shifting 
then I get decimal to binary, and then what do I need to do? Update. This is really uh, in draw, right? In draw, there's a draw function somewhere. This is like update the states. Uh, what? Oh no. Oh no. Where do I do that? Oh, I did that here. So I need to update all the states. So, oh look, I have a set state function. How, how convenient. So I also now, once I do that, I need to go through and set the state to num car at i. And, uh, and this probably has to be a number. Oh, but maybe I have that in set state. Oh, it's bully, right? I forgot I had this whole crazy thing to take the string, which is 0, 1, turn it into a number, and turn it into a Boolean. Perfect. So it does that already. So now I can shift. Oh, boy. <gasps> divide by 2, divide by 2. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. So I can now bit shift. Oh, this is, let's go back to 90, right? This is 90. Whoops. 90. Okay, ready? Here we go. Let's, this is going to be an exciting moment. No, no. Ah, don't click there. No, get back to 90. There we go. So we now have interactive bit shifting. Now, you, the viewer of this, you probably want to add shift the other way. That wouldn't be too hard to add. I'd just add another button, shift the other way. Maybe I want to actually have like a slider shift by a certain number of bits. Maybe I don't want to limit myself to eight. I want to have two bytes displayed. Um, but there's all sorts of possibilities now uh, in terms of how I can do bit shifting. Oh, I got to do bit masking. That's good because there's going to be another video here. Okay, uh, but there's a couple things I want to. I know everyone is going crazy that I have the black is on. Let's fix this. Let's make it more clear um, so I don't leave, leave everybody in such a traumatized state. So I'm going to make the background 51, and then um, I'm going to, in fill, where I'm drawing it, I am going to, uh, and let's, let's use a ternary operator. I'm comfortable with them now. So I'm going to say fill. This dot state. If this dot state is on, the fill is 255, or if it's off, zero. There we go. So this is they're all off. Now they're on. It looks weird to me. <laughs> oh, background 51 is like the same as the actual. Anyway, so and I can shift now. Ah, it's crazy. Yeah, that looks better, right? I'm shifting down. Uh, okay, ah, I, I forgot about you, the viewer. All right, so, um, I don't know, th thrill me with your weird, uh, <laughs> weird variations on this. Um, I look forward to it. I do need to do something about bit masking, which I will uh, do an ampersand, an and or an or, and Simon has been telling me, <laughs> breaking news in the chat over and over again. I can also do XOR. So you can also do um, XOR as a bitwise operation. So thanks for watching this um, challenge. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you make. Uh, share with me stuff in the comments, all your corrections and complaints and happy thoughts or whatever. And I'll see you again in another video. Goodbye. All right. All right, everybody, I've got to go. Um, oh, yeah. So use 51. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK. Use 51 for disabled. Oh, yeah, that's everything on. And then make the stroke weight for this came from oh earlier the chat scrolled by it. Yeah, this is better. But maybe also I want to just make this 200. Yeah. Or maybe I want to make the stroke then zero. How about that? I don't know. I can't figure out what to do, how to make it better. <laughs> I am so visually challenged. Stroke. Like what about if it was like pink or something?
There we go. I don't know. I'm so visually challenged. I think I'll just leave it. Let's just leave it at this. Let's make the stroke weight two. Uh, not 42, two. And uh, let's have them be off at the beginning. I can actually, let's make it random. Um, at the beginning, uh, set state uh, random to, yeah, I was going to add floor in here, but let's, all right, so that's good. Every time it starts, it's something random. Okay. Uh, ah, Nathan writes, second time in a row I've super chatted Dan and it went past him without noticing. And Simon wants me to show the gist. Okay, so hold on. Let me find, well, how come it goes away? I don't see it here. But thank you, Nathan, who's Solar Liner, I believe, for the super chat. Um, that is very kind of you. I'm sorry that I missed it. I don't know how to like see the super chat if it, it's like in the past. Um, I don't have that. Maybe I can see it in my view over here. No top chat, no live chat. Super, I can, I can send a super chat. What if I send a super chat to myself? This is interesting. Is it gonna let me? So far it's letting me. Hey, it worked. Okay, now, can I see previous ones? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I got a million messages here in GitHub. I mean, in Slack, okay. Uh, super chat from Solar Liner. Ta-da, now go to your meeting. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can probably see it in the history of my... Uh, Whatever, what you call it? YouTube super. I gotta go get lunch. I have ten minutes to get lunch before this thing I'm going to. I don't want to be too late to it. Um, but I do. Oh, and I forgot to record this thing to disk again. I'm sorry, Matsya. I don't know why I can't remember that these days. Um, I there was something though I wanted to do. There was something else. Oh, Simon's gist. Uh, all right, so. Uh, gist.github.com slash Simon dash Tiger. Uh, let's find this gist, bitwise JS. These are all the bitwise operations. And, or, XOR, not. Ooh, not would be a fun one to do. Zero fill, shift left, zero fill, shift right, and signed. Ooh, boy, so many more things to talk about. Uh, Chris Ray asked, are you going to word to vec today? Sadly, apparently, no. <laughs> because I make a list of things to do, and I think, like, it's, I have two hours, and I take much longer to do them. So I, the word to vec stuff I'm going to do, <laughs> because I, I, I'm teaching it in my class, actually, here at NYU next week. So um, uh, hopefully it'll happen next week. Maybe, maybe I can... Find a time before next Friday even to do it. Um, I do want to mention one thing, um, which is, um, uh, I'd be curious for any feedback on this. Um, I've been really trying to find a new merchandise shop. People request merchandise. Um, and actually, if I just go to, um, um, I think, the Coding Train channel and go to Community tab, I posted a link there. So this is a bunch of new designs that I'm actually wearing one of them right now. <laughs> the microphone just went, no, the microphone's still attached to me. You can see, uh, never forget the this dot <laughs> shirt is here underneath. Um, uh, so uh, Jason Hegland, who has done all the illustrations for the coding train, has made a whole new set of designs with, um, I'll refactor that later, never forget that this dot and all the different coding train characters. So I, I've been trying to find a good place to um, have these available for people who are interested. And I really like this new uh, site called Design by Humans. So um, right now it's just in progress. There's very few options. Ooh, apparently I can sign up and get 10% off my next order. Can I go away from that? Um, but uh, for example, if I click here, 
I think I can see like this shirt, but there's like other colors and there's like, anyway, I'm curious for feedback. Does this, you don't have to buy anything, but if you could sort of like click around here and just see how it works for you. And then a comment in this thread uh, with any feedback or things that would be um, helpful. Um, then that would be that would be super helpful to me. I'm gonna try to launch this hopefully sometime next week. Uh, and I believe this is this is my question. So Rahul uh, uh, asks, can you send those T-shirts to India? One of the reasons why I picked Design for Humans is well, one is they they seem to have um, a nice uh, policy in terms of the quality and labor practices of the shirts that they make. So again, I haven't done a deep dive into this, but. Um, Brief view of their site seems like a good organization with good quality stuff uh, made um, in, with good practices. And they also have international shipping at reasonable prices. So check that for me. Um, Rahul, uh, even if you don't buy anything, if you could click all the way into like where the last step before you would buy, or at least calculates your shipping, let me know what that price is for you to India. You can send me a tweet or a comment on that thread in the community tab. I would love to know that. Um, all right, everyone. Mwah! You are so wonderful. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out, doesn't need a shout out, but I've been watching Smarter Every Day recently. I love those videos and watching them with my kids. Random shout out to a much larger YouTube channel than me. <laughs> um, but I, one of the things that I saw that I was actually thinking of doing as a coding challenge is, is recent, um, maybe we can find it, uh, Smarter Every Day. I really need to go. Um, this is something that I'm thinking of doing. I never know like about reappropriating other hey, content. Oh. Well, okay, okay, okay. Um, not the backwards brain bicycle. This one, Canon Shockwaves. Introducing spectra um, let me find. In, um, he shows. Um, oh wow! So these are like yeah, not skippable ads. Interesting. I don't have not skippable ads enabled for my channel. Spectra, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, ah, okay. Oh my goodness. The Gaming Jin writes, I want to thank you for all the videos you have made. They're super useful. By the way, I am deaf, so I can't hear you in the stream. All right, so um, I want to just pause for a second to, to um, address this. I have been, I'm really, uh, priority for me is accessibility, and um, I have all of my video tutorials, the edited versions that come out of the live stream that I use for my courses, all of those are now being captioned through rev.com and I, I make sure the captions are there before I upload, pu publish them. So I would like to know, I'd love to hear from you if those captions are helpful uh, uh, and work for you. I, some of my recent live streams, and I, and I recognize the absurdity of me doing this where the gaming gin uh, is not able to know what I'm talking about right now. There are automated captions. Um, but I have been trying to do live captioning with a company called White Coat Captioning. So um, I'm gonna type a message. Um, to the gaming gin right now, um, uh, just in the chat. Um, please get in touch via email or Twitter. I'd love to chat about uh, captioning for accessibility. So I'm writing that in the chat right now. Um, there is, I do, I think I have the automated live captions, um, which are something. Um, but anyway, I would love to, I'd love to be in touch to figure out ways to make the live streams more accessible. And I've actually been asking YouTube about this uh, directly. Um, so somewhere in this video, Destin does frame differencing on the slow motion. This is it. This is like totally wild. So this is a slow motion cannon uh, firing, but um, uh, with a frame differencing algorithm applied to it, and it really like shows these shockwave patterns. I was, maybe I'll get in touch with Destin. I, don't, um, I would love to get the raw footage and try to implement the code. I mean, I guess I could probably pull it off the channel, um, but, I, but I think I probably want to get permission to do this. Whoa, that's a giant Destin there. If I'm, if I'm saying the name right, is it Dustin or Destin? Um, um, but I would love to get, um, to try to do that in processing. I think that would be interesting. Okay, uh, I was watching this last night with my kids and they stayed up way too late. No more Smarter Every Day at night, kids. You kids stay up late and watch Smarter Every Day. But my kids, go to bed on time, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I have to go. This is the end of today. Um, um, I'm gonna just check the chat.
Destin, okay. Um, I have, um, I recently had the chance to meet Destin. That was awesome. I'm kind of a fan. <laughs> I was, I played it cool though. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm looking at the chat, looking at the chat. All right. Um, all right, everybody. Um, do you dye your hair? Cause you had videos with gray hair. You know, I don't. It's a great question actually. And I think what it is, is the green screen actually makes the gray less. Also when I have shorter hair, it's not as obvious. But let's see, and the focus will be off. You can see, first of all, you can see me sort of balding up here. But I, I think for whatever reason, the a green screen, maybe if I go to the, um, if I take that off, this is very important to address, of course. Uh, hold on. This is the question I'm choosing to answer. I mean, should I? Uh, uh, hold on. Why am I? Oh. oh wait, no, it's here. Oh, it's locked. Ah, filters. Yeah, I turn off the filtering. Nope. Ah. There we go. All right. There's my baldness and my gray hair. Plenty of gray hair. But somehow the camera makes me look younger. <laughs> Let me turn that back on. <laughs> um, and um, um, oh, I have to put this back. <laughs> no. Open broadcast to you all enough. There we go. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. See you next week. I have to find where I shut the stream off now, so I'm awkwardly going to be here for a little longer. Um, uh, be on the lookout for my Word to Vex series, which is going to start publishing public um, as soon as this weekend or Monday or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah.